Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. Good? Good. I know I, I can see your eyes, so I'm guessing that you're smiling right now. Uh, but welcome everyone here and, and welcome everyone at home. Uh, a blessing it is to be here together uh, wherever you may be as we are all one. Uh, on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost, uh, June 28th, uh, 2020, as we dwell upon uh, the Word of God this morning and the Word that brings us the sword. And what an important and timely message this is. Uh, let us begin uh, with a confession and absolution uh, on divine service setting for for those who are at home. Uh, but for those here, uh, let us rise as we are able, as we begin in our bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as His people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. So call an ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. And bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sin. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord For. alone, our Lord most high, in God the Father's glory, amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, Grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed 
among us and following its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us continue with our readings this morning. Our first reading is from the Old Testament, from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 to 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true. And bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from the ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's continue with our reading of the Psalms. So we read this responsively for those at home. Um, these are found in the front of your hymnal. Psalm 119, verses 153 to 160. Let us begin. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Lead my case and pity me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your just decrees. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The epistle reading this morning is from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 1 to 13. Or do you know, brothers, or do you not know, brothers? For I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Thus a married woman is bound by the law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law, that the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, 
and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as you are able for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated at this time. If we could have the children come up for a children's message uh, for those at home. Huddle up near the screen, and this is for you. Good morning, children. I hope you are doing good today. And uh, blessings on this Sunday morning as we are here yet together again. And today, um, I want to talk about something that's very important, of course. Uh, you know, what do you guys, children, what do you children know about the law? Right? I think when we see the law, we, we always look at uh, this man right here. Who is that man? Starts with an M, ends with an S. I don't know what other name there is that starts with an M and ends with an S, but only Moses, right? It's Moses. He has been given the law. Now, the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20. Now, friends, why is the law important? I know some of you might say that the law shows us what we, what we should do, what God wants us to do, um, what he expects of us, or how we could follow the law, right? After all, these are all good things that we, we should do, right? We should see the law, and yes, it's good. It shows us how to love God, and it shows us how to love neighbor. But at the end of the day, as St. Paul was telling us in our Romans 7 text, the law at the end of the day shows us our sin, right? Yes, the law shows us what we ought to do, but the question is, can we do that perfectly? Can you? Can your parents? Can I do it perfectly? And the answer is no, right? The law shows us at the end of the day, it shows us our sin, right? You know, the law uh, not only shows us our sin, but what does it do next? It shows us and it points us, well, to the one outside of ourselves, and that is Jesus Christ. The thing is about the law, friends, is that, yes, it shows us what we ought to do, but as St. Paul would always remind us that this sin is real and that we fall short in our sin and that we need Jesus. I think the law is kind of like when you go to the doctor's office and they show you, you know, you, you have a cough or a sneeze and, and the doctor gives you the bad news that, you know, you, you came, you're, you're sick with something, right? And, and I think that's what the law does too. It shows us our true sickness. It shows us our sin. But it doesn't just leave us there. It points us to Christ, the gospel, the one who is your great doctor, who died on the cross for your sin, who shed his body and blood for you, who, who cures you and, and saves you and, and forgives you and gives you life that is forever. This is who our Jesus is. So yes, the law shows us our sin, but Jesus saves us from that sin by going to the cross and rising on the third day and giving each and every one of you the gift 
of eternal life and the forgiveness of sins and salvation. So remember that this day as you continue on um, in this life of faith. All right, let us pray. Our dearly Father, we thank you for this day, O Lord. We thank you for this time together. Lord, we know that your law is good, but your law shows us how we have fallen short in sin. Lord, forgive us and lead us and guide us always in your gospel. And grant each and every one of these children the comfort of salvation, knowing full well that by your blood on the cross, they are forgiven of all their sins. Bless them and lead them this day. We pray all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right, you can go back to your seats now. Uh, continuing on here, uh, why don't we be, uh, continue on with our sermon hymn. Our sermon hymn. Hymn number 851, 851. <laughs> The sermon for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from the 
Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 34 to 42. The sermon is entitled, The Sword of Truth. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some sword-like words this morning from our Lord. There is no way around it, as He says to us. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I know what you're thinking. Isn't Jesus the Prince of Peace? Isn't Jesus the embodiment of peace? The peace that would surely be delivered by his work upon the cross. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Again, Jesus really goes for the jugular on what we hold dear in our lives, the sword. I know what you're thinking. Isn't our Lord the God of love? Why is he bringing these conflicting words? As a parent here, the next words I heard in those scriptures, ooh, it's a, it's a toughie. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. I know what you're thinking as parents or even as children. This can be a tough pill to swallow. Difficult words, sword-like words from our Jesus Today, and these are difficult words, yet so important and true these words are. Now that's what truth brings to the table, right? Truth is not one of relativism. It's not a fence-sitting word. It's not a pleasing the world kind of word. It's not a conforming to the flesh kind of word or conforming to the culture or your opinion or your own ideas type of word. But Jesus' word is what it is. It's the truth. The truth, and if there's one truth, as Jesus gives it to us today, there is no middle ground, right? There's no middle ground. On one hand, we know the truth, right? John 8, that the truth will do what? The truth will set you free. Yet even in the good news, Jesus brings to us the daunting realities that are ahead. Because when the truth is proclaimed, the sword of truth divides from what is true and also what is false. The sword of truth exposes and cuts to the heart, as it reads in Hebrews 4.12, that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts, and humbly speaking, the intentions of the heart. The intentions of the heart. We very well know what we are born into, inheritors of the fall, dead in sin, a world separated from God, and of course, the sinful condition. Darkness flourishes without the light, living in its own sin and its its every evil, plundering and, and, and coveting and craving and desiring, so comfortable in this flesh of darkness our sin is. But yet when the light of Christ comes to shatter and expose that darkness, as the word of truth is being proclaimed, the law, the law that shows us our sin, The very thoughts, the words, the deeds, the intentions of our own hearts are being exposed. That when the word of God comes, the idols have no place to hide. The conscience is on the forefront as the law stings and accuses. You know, no one, no one wants to go there. I know with the law, you know, we always just want to hear, I think, all the good stuff. 
we dare not broach these types of topics. But I think how important it is to know these very things, that the sinful flesh in each and every one of us, each and every one of us, isn't that why we're here? Isn't that why we are listening to these very words? Because in these sinful flesh that we have, so much we cling to these very things, self-serving and independent from God, His light and His sword of truth. And that's the struggle that we all face, especially in these times when we are separated by what is before us. How easy it is to be complacent and indifferent in God's Word as we go on our own way. Now, yesterday we had Confirmation Saturday, and I reminded basically to the children how important this word is as the word of God is a lamp unto their feet and a light to their path. It, does, it doesn't just stop there on that day, but it continues because the word of God is their strength. The word of God is our strength because we know on this very path we are not facing... Just all the good things, right? The reality is we find ourselves with many temptations. The evil foe is on us in so many different ways. He attempts to turn us from the truth, from God's word in every single which way. Satan was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Same tactics, same strategy, same fiery arrows. Do you see it? Do you see it? Because we see it with our first parents, Adam and Eve. He does the same thing to us. Yes, eat from this tree. You surely will not die. You will be like God. In other words, Satan tells each and every one of you, cling to this, cling to that. You are fine. These little gods will suffice in your lives. You will be like God. Cling to your career. Cling to your possessions. Find your earthly security, for they will also suffice. Cling to your thoughts. Cling to your ways. Cling to the culture. Cling to yourself and your own truth, for they will suffice. Cling to your ego and arrogance and your independence. Find your worth in the ways of man, for again, they will suffice. Do you hear these words? From the devil, put the word on the back burner, the devil says. But Jesus comes with the sword to reveal to us the law, to show us our sin, as St. Paul reminds us in Romans 7, as the law exposes and acknowledges the sin that is before us as it seizes every opportunity. We would rather live in ignorance and in this indulgent bliss. For the word, as we hear it, grates on us because it shows us who we truly are. As I said yesterday, I always think of the cheese grater, right? Do you guys grate cheese or do you just buy it shredded? Do you cheat like me usually 90% of the time? <laughs> But you, when, when, when that occasion does come, when I actually take out the metal thing, you know, you do one of those, it, uh, I always think of my sin. I know, I know that's me. I don't, I don't know if you ever think of that. Do you ever think of your sin when you grate cheese? Is that just me? I, maybe, that, as my kids say, Dad, Dad, it's just you. But anyways, uh, the point is that when I grate that cheese and I'm cutting it, I think of my own sin and how... I see how it does great against my own sinful flesh, right? I, I just don't want it to cut me. I don't want it, you know, when I'm grating this cheese, I just, it's excruciating, right? To even see, and you, you don't want your, uh, your knuckles to bleed because you don't want it to cut against the thing. And it's just, it's just horrible, right? Grating is just, it's just a horrible thing. And, and I think with the Word of God as well, you know, this world, not even just this world, but even ourselves, with our old... Adam, our own human flesh, our sinful nature, we, we just don't want to hear it, right? It grates against our own fallen nature. 
Because the world is saying you're number one. The world is saying, don't worry about the word of God right now. That's not important. You have better things to do. You have better things to search out for. You have better things to cling to. And Jesus today, I think, when he talks about family, he goes there, doesn't he? I mean, family to us. I don't know about all of you. This is one of our great gifts that we have, our, our great callings in life. But so easily can we even love our families, love our children more than God. I think he really, he really is bringing out the things that we cherish the most, our children, our grandchildren, our, our spouses, our, our families. I don't know about you, but it's, I love my children dearly, honestly, to the point where they can become idols in our lives. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. To which do you cling today? What do you trust in this day and age of what we are facing? Because Jesus is saying here, if you're clinging to these things, there is nothing to gain. And we know this, but yet what do we do? We still, in our sinful flesh, are guilty of clinging to these very things. And thus, thus we repent. The thing about the sword of truth is that, yes, this sword brings us the law. It shows us our sin. But yet at the same time, Jesus is here with us. And we know who God is. He is the God of grace, the sword of truth who takes up the cross perfectly. The one who stands worthy to die for our sins as the perfect sacrifice that by his very work he gives to you his own life standing in your place. That is the truth, that Jesus is faithful in his life, his entire life to deliver you the promise of salvation. That yes, we are called to take up the cross and follow him, but quickly we find ourselves doing what? Well, can I take this? Can I take that? Right? Can I grab hold of that? Can I grab hold of that? You know what Jesus does? He goes to the cross. He doesn't bring anything but his own self to be your lamb, the true sacrifice for your sin. Every idol, every shame, every sin, every troubled conscience that you might be dealing with right now, Jesus endured the cross for your sin, covering you and washing you and granting you the assurance of salvation so that no longer are you searching and toiling and living in futility, but rather living in His cross, living in His truth, living in His, in His gospel the resurrection, where the graves burst open, making you alive in the victory of our Savior. The law shows us our sin, and humbling that is. But thanks be to God that His truth has set us free, the truth in the empty tomb and this is the word that we cling to this day. By His grace, He has crushed our Lord. He is the crushing destroyer who destroyed the devil, who has reconciled you to God, who has forgiven you of all your sins. Without the law, we would never see our sin, and without the law, we would never see the need of the gospel. But there in our sin, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are broken and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All the things that you cling to, they will not give you such things, but only Christ. Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the word that points you now and forevermore to the forgiveness of your sins, that in the midst of all that is happening, here we are in the truth, in the midst of what this, 
what we are facing in this world. And that truth is yours. Jesus, the forgiveness of your sins. Though we fall short, there Jesus is in his obedience to be our Savior, to be the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. this time, uh, for those who are at home, uh, this is a moment of offering. You may make your offering online or, or drop it off at church or mail it to us. Um, but as you give, uh, always prayerfully give and joyfully give as the Lord ha is the giver of all things in our life. Uh, may this be a blessing to you um, as you take this time to offer. And for those who are here, uh, the the, um, after communion, the, the giving plate is um, there uh, near the exit. Please uh, drop that off as you depart. Please rise as you are able as we continue with the confession of our faith in the Nicene Creed. In one voice, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In one voice, let us pray the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, please be seated. Are there any prayers we would like to ascend to the Lord this day? Anything in particular? Also, uh, prayer, keep in prayer um, Eve's daughter, Karen, as she is uh, looking for employment at this time. Jeff? Uh, Melinda's cousin, uh, um, Dave, is having some medical issues. She's uh, kind of declining. Uh, so just prayers for him.
right. Let's continue with the prayers. Let us pray. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near to the Lord's throne of grace and pray as he has commanded us, trusting in the Lord to hear the prayers of his people and answer our petitions according to his mercy. O most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray you to so rule and govern your church and all our pastors and ministers that she may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, defended against all adversity and protected from all adversities that thereby faith may be strengthened and love increased in us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. grant health, wisdom, and integrity to all authority over us, especially our president, our governor, the Congress, all legislative bodies, and all judges and magistrates. Endow them with your spirit and respect for your word, that they would serve your goodwill in the maintenance of righteousness and the punishment of the wickedness, so that we all may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty, according to your gracious will, turn the hearts of our enemies and make them to walk with us in humility and peace. Lord, in your mercy, yes. grant to those in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Um, for those uh, we pray, especially at this time, uh, continued prayers uh, for Trish as the cancer has uh, reached most of her body. Bless her, O oh Lord, in this time. Lord, grant her your peace, grant her your word. Lead her to your light. Lord, grant her uh, your peace in, in the midst of great terror uh, that she may be facing right now. Bless her heart and, and, and lead her, O oh Lord, always in your truth. And um, uh, grant, your, um, grant your promises to her this day. Also, O oh Lord, we pray uh, for the opening doors of employment for Karen, Eve's daughter. Bless her, O oh Lord. And, and grant her a patient of heart, knowing full well that your will is done. Uh, continue to provide for her in daily bread. Um, and uh, Lord willing, in time, open those doors uh, for gained employment. Also, oh Lord, uh, for Melinda's cousin, Dave, who is facing recent medical issues, bless him, O oh Lord, bless the doctors, grant them wisdom and, and um, faithfulness to their vocation to do what is best for Dave. Bless Dave and his family and uh, Lord willing, uh, grant him a safe recovery in the midst of the physical sufferings that he is facing. Bless his heart, O oh Lord. And also, O oh Lord, uh, continued prayers uh, for our confirmands uh, yesterday, for, for Travis, Thielen, and Trinity Trento, and also Zoe Jung. Lord, bless them in your word, and may your word continue to be the foundation to which they walk. Lead them in the comfort of salvation. And may this just be the beginning to the glorious plans that you have for them in the victorious gift of the gospel. Lord, uh, continued prayers also for uh, our continued missionary, or our missions that we are funding uh, this year. Uh, for Pastor Bradshaw, Centro Cristiano Hispano. Also for Pastor Kieselowski uh, for Philadelphia Lutheran Ministries. Uh, continue to pray um, in these times of of COVID that they too are having an effective ministry and that they too are healthy and sound as they um, continue to proclaim the word uh, to the fields that you have sent them to. A continued prayers for our church. Lord, bless us in the unity of God's word. Lead us, O Lord, by this gospel. Unite us always uh, in the promise of salvation and lead us during these, these unstable times in the mercy and the peace that you give. Also prayers for our shut-ins, for Liz, for Betty, for Richard, and also for Marty Thomas. Lord, bless them, O Lord, this day, and grant them a continued endurance in the one true faith. Lead them, O Lord, um, and grant them your safety. And also, O Lord, for our global pandemic, Lord, we just pray that you may continue to, um, to protect us and guide us, and that, Lord, that this pandemic may subside in due time. Lord, may we trust in you in this time. May we uh, continue to cling to your promises um, as we live uh, during these uncertain times. And bless us, O oh Lord, always in your word. But for all these things we pray, lead us, sanctify us, and guide us in your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in love and 
faithfulness. Bless the homes and families of your people, that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Give your special grace to the widowed, the orphaned, all mothers with child, the aged and the infirmed, that they may grant them comfort, aid, and protection. Lord, in your mercy. All these things for which you have, have us ask of you, we pray you to grant to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we are bold to call your father, you, Father, and in whose name we pray, trusting in your mercy and confident that you will give answer to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord grant you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let us close with our hymn 836. says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love your neighbors as yourselves. And remember this day, yes, Jesus gives us the sword of truth, the truth that sets us free. And may this freedom be your peace as you continue to walk in the Lord's way, knowing full well that he is the God of light, the light unto your path the one who saves you and rescues you from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Go now in God's peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A quickly announcements. I know um, this week announcements. Uh, there, will be no, uh, there will be no Bible study or midweek Vesper service. Um, I will be down um, for a conference in Orange County. Uh, with fellow pastors as we uh, go through continuing education uh, there in Anaheim. Um, Anaheim, yes, that's right. Uh, but uh, I'll be gone until um, Thursday, so, um, so no, uh, no 
Bible study on Wednesday or Vespers, uh, you know, those Facebook devotions, um, you never know. I'll be peeking in. You never know what's going to happen with those. But I'll try my best to peek in here and there. Uh, but other than that, uh, uh, blessings to everyone um, that are here today and, and blessings to everyone at home. Uh, may this uh, word continue to go well with you and uh, may this be of your peace. Again, in July, uh, we will have uh, VBS on the last week of July, so be on the lookout for that, online VBS. And um, uh, we, will, we will go on from there. God's blessings to you all, and go serve in his name. Amen.